it is, the closest I will ever come to being on another planet. One of the most intriguing and interesting places I may have ever been in my entire life. There is nothing like it anywhere. The Arctic is extremely important for the entire world. It really is one of the controlling components of our climate. And as we all know, the uh, Arctic environment is changing rapidly. ISEX stands for Ice Exercise. It's conducted usually about 150 to 200 nautical miles north of Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, and the Beaufort Sea. And the big piece is to gain experience for both the military as well as for the science community to come and understand what's happening in the Arctic environment so that we have some sense of the impacts of global warming and what to anticipate moving forward. The Arctic environment is probably one of the most challenging places to exist as a human being. When you walk outside, temperature ranges from like minus 80 degrees to maybe minus 24 degrees. Going anywhere outside in the Arctic is a life or death scenario and you can't joke about it. The equipment has already arrived. It's shipped out there before we get there. They have made this hole in the ice. It's a uh, 15 by three feet hole. That's where we're gonna deploy our underwater vehicle. When you're trying to understand a phenomenon such as the oceanography in the Arctic, you have to map the properties of the ocean, temperature, salinity, currents, in different points in space and in different points in time. That allows us to assess what is the dynamics, how are things moving around, what are the laws driving these changes in the ocean environment. Now to do that, we need accurate measurements and we need to know where the measurements are made. And the way we do that is by deploying a, an underwater vehicle and it operates on its own. We can communicate with it, but how do we know where it is? When you are below the ice, when you're in the water, there's no GPS. So what we are trying to do at MIT is develop technology that gives the equivalent of GPS accuracy for navigation under the ice. And we do that with basically three components. One is a device that is measuring the motion relative to the ice. The second one is the underwater vehicle is transmitting a sound impulse out into the ocean. And that is received by four receivers hanging from the ice. When we look at the relative travel times from the vehicle to these various receivers, we can make a computation of where the vehicle actually was when it sent the message. We let the vehicle include in the message where it thinks it was. We compute the actual location, take the difference between the two and send it back down together with information about how much the ice is currently moving because we are measuring the relative motion to the ice. The third component is understanding the environment. So what we are doing is we are using our measurement of salinity temperature to identify where we should be in the water column to get the best possible navigation information. And by putting those together, we can get very accurate navigation solutions. It was crucial during those first few days to make sure that everything was working correctly. We're not gonna send the vehicle out to do the autonomous portions unless we're absolutely sure that it's going to work correctly as designed. We start getting a little more uh, courageous and we put a rope on it and now we start running with a prop but we run missions that are within a couple of hundred meters from the hydro hole. So at about day three, we got a warning that maybe there would be some evacuation level weather issues coming up in the next couple of days. We had everything ready. It was now or never. And that then is up to me as the chief scientist to make the decision. So much energy and effort had been spent to even get there. Well, it's, a, it's an anxious moment when you, uh, when you release the vehicle. Does it really work as we intended it to do? Because if it doesn't, we're going to lose the thing. I asked the crew, what do you guys think? And we all agree, let's go for it. Those initial comms coming back in are just so, okay, okay, it's doing like just like it did before. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same. We did it, it's working! And we knew that that concept we had been developed 
and which was the main objective, that it actually worked. Everything was looking beautiful, the vehicle's on its way home, and it suddenly just stopped. That moment when that, I, I don't even want to say it, because that was such a bomber, and we had a storm coming in the next day. One of the computers basically was saying that there was a fault, and it caused the tail cone to actually override and stop. Losing a vehicle like that, it's really irreplaceable. Uh, even more importantly, the data that proved that our concept worked would have been lost. So at, at, the, at the moment, we knew that the vehicle was sitting under the ice and we could not restart it. But the vehicle was still acoustically communicating with the modems, so we were able to know exactly where the vehicle was. But there was not enough time for uh, recovering it. They told us, sorry, you've got two hours and then you have to be getting off the ice. This was a hundred year snowstorm we had and it was dangerous. So we raced back out to the vehicle using the GPS coordinates from our system that, that the vehicle was telling us. We dug a hole right next to the vehicle and we were able to tie off that vehicle topside to a large spool of cable. It was so stressful having to leave the ice. Leaving the vehicle out there was gut-wrenching. Ah. Took about three days from when we were evacuated to we were actually able to have people back into camp. With that large storm that came through and the amount of time that passed, the ice had moved a substantial amount. But when we returned to the ice, we were able to very easily find that spool of, of cable that was topside on the ice and go from there, follow the line down into the, through the ice, and the vehicle was still present. The fact that we were able to use that initial GPS position so accurately to go drill a hole and, and tie off that vehicle, there was instantaneous satisfaction. We were spot on. It was exactly where we left it because the navigation system was so good. We achieved what we came up there for. We got the data. The whole five days was just one big wild ride. 